In this video, I'm going to be looking at the LaserStorm S10 laser engraver from Pergear. I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do and learn to be able to produce professional saleable parts with this machine. You may be surprised about what it actually takes. As this laser engraver is designed to be used by beginners as well as experienced users, I thought it'd be a good idea to find a complete laser engraving novice to try it out. And well, here I am. Yep, before opening the box from Pergear, I'd never used a laser engraver before, so all of the experiences and opinions in this video are from a complete beginner's perspective. Even though I've never used a laser engraver, I'm determined to put it through its paces and test every feature to find out what it can and can't do. This laser engraver was sent to me directly from Pergear themselves, and as with all my review videos, I'm under absolutely no obligation to give it a good review if I don't believe it deserves one. If you do decide you want to buy one of these machines for yourself, then Pergear are offering you, the viewers of this video, some big discounts. The discounts vary depending on where you live, but for my UK viewers, the discount is a massive 25%. Remember, you can only get these discounts by using the purchase links and the discount codes in the description below. So let's dive in. As with most of these kind of machines, the LaserStorm S10 is very well packaged and almost everything you need is supplied in the box. The first thing that surprised me about the S10 was how quick it was to set up. I'm used to assembling 3D printers and getting this laser engraver set up was a breeze in comparison. There are a couple of assembly steps that are detailed in the manual, but everything was pretty well covered. The only thing that confused me slightly was which way up one of the extrusions needed to be, but a close look at the pictures in the manual helped me figure it out. There aren't many things you can get wrong with the assembly, but assembling the belts could maybe use a little bit more guidance. I'm used to working with these two belts on 3D printers, so setting the tension wasn't a problem for me, but anybody who hasn't done that before may be a little apprehensive. They only really need to be tight enough so that the teeth don't slip, and I imagine that someone might be more likely to over tighten them if they weren't sure. Also, you need to set the roller tension on either side, and I found it was best to leave these so that you can quite easily turn each of the rollers rather than a little bit tighter as you would do on a 3D printer. The laser module slots on very easily and is held in place with just one screw and the wiring is easy to attach. Personally, I chose to attach the wiring very slightly differently to the manual as I found there was a bit too much tension on one of the limit switches at full stretch. Now, Pergear may not be known for their laser engraving pedigree and more for their camera gear. However, what it appears they've done for their first foray into laser engraving is to actually just rebrand some Atomstack models. This means that straight away they can offer a range of well-developed machines with readily available accessories and support. With everything built in around 20 minutes, I felt like I was ready to turn on my new toy, but I was a little hesitant to do so without making sure it was safe. I knew that high powered lasers can be very dangerous and I was surprised to see that there were no safety glasses included in the box. With a little further research, I found that the Atomstack M50 laser module that they use on this machine actually comes pre-installed with an eye protection window. However, the Pergear manual advises using safety glasses, so I didn't really want to take any chances. Luckily, I have Amazon Prime, so within 24 hours, I had some laser safe eyewear. As part of my responsibility to the companies who supply these machines for review, I like to report back any issues I find so that they can improve the user experience. I of course told Pergear that the eye protection guidance was a little confusing and could cause some frustration for a new user. They came back to me straight away to say that they would make sure that they included safety glasses with the next model. In the meantime, if you buy one of these yourself, just make sure to buy some safety glasses to avoid any delays or frustration. Now that I had my Rodney Sandstorm shades and my fire extinguisher standing by, I finally felt confident to turn on my LaserStorm S10. The first thing you'll notice when you hit the power button is the cooling fan that starts up immediately. This is part of the laser module itself and there's no way to turn it off without shutting everything down. It's quite noisy, as is the loud beep at startup, so you're never going to accidentally leave it on. Whilst you can use the attached touchscreen to drive the laser head around and start and stop jobs, I'd advise starting by plugging the USB lead into a computer and finding some software to use. Now, this is where I started to feel a little out of my depth. I had no idea what to do when it came to software, so I did what most of us would do and I searched on YouTube. Everyone seems to recommend starting with Lightburn. Unfortunately, this is paid software, but there is a 30 day free trial and there are free options out there that you could try. I decided to try Lightburn at least for the free trial period and to just see how I got on. Once you have the software downloaded and installed, it guides you through connecting your laser engraver. Lightburn immediately recognized my engraver and I didn't even have to tell it how big my bed was. This part was all pretty easy, but after that the help stops. Again, with the help of some YouTube videos, I worked out how to write my name and then give it an outline in the software. Then when it came to sending it to the engraver, I had a few decisions to make. What I figured out is that there are three basic things you need to decide before you can engrave or cut with a laser. 
you need to decide how much power you want your laser to put out as a percentage of its maximum. You need to decide how fast you want the motors to move the laser head across the material. And then you need to decide how many times you want it to pass over the same spot. But how do you know what to set all of these at when you're starting? There are lots of test files out there on the interweb that you can load up and run. You can see what you think is the best result and then read off the settings to use for that material. The big problem I had with this, and the problem I assume most people will face, is where do you even start? The last thing I wanted to do was damage the machine or even set my workshop on fire because I chose the wrong number here or there. Thankfully, Pergis supply a cheat sheet on a PDF on the SD card that's included. This tells you the basic settings you can use as a starting point for the most common materials. This helped me massively and I just loaded up the recommended plywood engraving settings ready to start my first job. To get you started, Pergis supply a few test samples of plywood. These won't get you a long way, but there's certainly enough there to learn how to get started. Before you can hit start, you need to put your material in the right place. Set the height of your laser, but then also put something under your material so that you don't burn through your workbench if you have the power up a little high. The last two are really easy, as there's a stainless steel sheet supplied in the box that you can put under your material, and then you only have to use the small acrylic spacers supplied in the box to set the laser height. There's only one knob to loosen and the head slides up and down until you tighten it again. When it comes to aligning the material in the right place, there are a few ways to do it. As the LaserStorm X10 comes with limit switches on both axis, and if you tick the right box within your software, you can move the laser to any point on your bed with incredible accuracy. Both within the software and with the engraver's own touchscreen, there is a frame option. This will make the laser move around the perimeter of where it's going to engrave your job so that you can see if your material is lined up correctly. Once you're happy it's in the right position, you're ready to go. You can either start the job directly from your computer or you can export the file to an SD card and start the job from the printer's own screen. Either way works perfectly well, but I found when dialing in the settings for a new material, it was quicker to run the job directly from a laptop. With everything checked and double checked and with my safety glasses firmly in place, I tentatively hit start. The machine quickly and efficiently replicated exactly what was on my screen. No fuss, no fire, and at the end of it, I actually have my eyesight. Yay! Okay, I could have lined it up a bit better, but other than that, I was really happy that everything had worked exactly as it was supposed to. One thing I did find, which was not surprising really, that there was now a strong smell of burning wood in my workshop, and there's no kind of extractor fan included with these kind of machines. I didn't particularly want to be breathing in whatever was being vaporised from the material, so I quickly rigged up a 4-inch hose in a computer fan to try and direct some of the fumes outside. Unfortunately, this was pretty useless and a floor standing fan pointing out the door seemed to be much more effective. Luckily, it's been quite warm while I've been trying out the laser storm, so I've been able to have the door open, but I'm going to have to find a better solution for the winter. With some basic extraction now rigged up, I wanted to see what I had to do to cut all the way through material. It turns out it's pretty simple. You just turn up the power, slow down the movement speed and go over the same path multiple times until it cuts through. I tried a number of test files to try and nail down the perfect settings for this plywood and ended up settling on something which was pretty much what Pergear recommended in the first place. Now I felt like I'd figured out all the basics, I decided to test all the different materials I could lay my hands on. I'm sure like me you want to know the limits of this machine so I'll skip to what it can and can't do and then show you some of the results for each material. In my experience the 10 watt laser on this machine can realistically cut through about 6 millimeters of plywood. If you use something softer, it will probably cut deeper, and if you have a harder wood, the cut will probably be shallower. I've seen some say that they can cut up to 9mm ply on a 10 watt laser, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. More passes and slower speeds just gave me more burning and didn't actually cut any deeper. Of course, paper and cardboard can be cut on much lower settings. Unfortunately, I used a little bit too much power when cutting card and actually damaged the protective stainless steel sheet. It warped due to the localised heat, so I couldn't use it anymore. In an ideal world, I'd use a steel honeycomb bed, but I didn't have one, so I had to improvise. You can use something like a sheet of MDF or a thicker steel, but all I had was an old floor tile. I found this actually worked surprisingly well. It's never going to warp with the heat, and you'd have to go some to cut through a floor tile with a laser. I also found during testing that the higher the laser module was, the more accurate its movements were. This must be extra leverage on the mechanism in the lower position causing more flex. I just spaced my tile up higher for the thinner materials, which was all very easy. Once I felt like I tested all of the options on wood-based products, I decided I want to try what I thought would be some of the more difficult materials like mirrors, slate and metals. I didn't have any to hand, so I raided a local store and found some mirrors, some slate coasters and some wooden utensils that I thought might look nice with engravings on. 
Again, on the advice of another YouTuber, I tried spraying some matte clear coat onto the slate before engraving and was astounded by the results. I had no idea it was this easy to get results this good on slate at the first try. I did run a test on the first one to try and dial in some settings, but after that it was just a case of lining it up and hitting start. Once the machine's finished its run, you have a product ready to sell. I messed around with the brightness on the Gorilla image before engraving as I thought it would be too dark and it ended up being a bit light, but it's still great and all of these are going to get used. Next, I used a laser to remove the backing from a mirror. You could shine a light through to be able to see the image more clearly, but it still looks great if you don't. You can even paint over the engraving to see a colour through. I can't really over exaggerate how easy this is to do either. The hardest thing is making sure that your material is sitting central and straight. But I worked out a pretty simple method for doing this by just having the laser cut a jig out of cardboard first and that worked great. So far I hadn't found anything that this simple yet capable machine couldn't do so I decided to up the ante. Etching into anodized aluminium works great but unfortunately I couldn't leave a permanent mark on raw aluminium no matter what I tried. One trick that I did learn was spraying some paint onto the surface before engraving and then removing the paint afterwards with something like acetone. While this didn't help on aluminium, it was awesome on mild steel, glass and tile. On this plated tool I even used a dry wipe marker pen which I didn't think had worked until I wiped it off. When my son wanted to take his new water bottle to school, just five minutes under the laser has ensured that it's not going to get mistaken for anybody else's. I'd never really given a lot of thought to laser engraving before, but the Pergear LaserStorm S10 is so easy to set up and use that I found myself with a new hobby. With 3D printing it's very easy to make setting up and running the printer the hobby rather than actually printing the things you want. With this laser engraver that's never an issue. Once you have your first engraving done all you then need to do is make minor tweaks for different materials and the only limit is your imagination. So to get back to the actual machine that we're reviewing how about some pros and cons? On the negative side safety glasses are a must for me. I know that there's an attempt at eye protection as part of the laser module, but it doesn't take any more than a reflected beam from a shiny material for your eyesight to be permanently damaged. Some people aren't going to be as vigilant as I am, and including safety glasses in the box might make the difference between an accident happening and not. But as I say, Pergear are planning to include glasses from now on. The fan noise is quite loud, and laser engraving is not something you should be doing inside your house, in my opinion, so you're going to need some sort of shed or workshop to put it in. Also, as I can attest, the included stainless steel sheet is very easy to damage and ideally you need a better bed under your material. And it's a similar story with the only other things I wish were better. I would like some kind of extraction, I would like some kind of rotary attachment so that I can engrave on curved surfaces and I'd like a better bed. None of these are essential however. As we've seen, all that you get in the box from Pergear is actually enough to get professional looking results even for a beginner like me. Any accessories are just going to allow you to do more or make life a little easier. When it comes to the positives, there are many. From opening the box you could be completing your first engraving within an hour, and that's if you're a complete beginner. If you've got any experience or have watched a video like this one, you could probably do it faster. Also, as far as I can see there's very little calibration or maintenance to do. It's advisable to clean the lens quite regularly, but as with everything else on the LaserStorm S10, this is really easy to do. The Atomstack connection also means that there are already a lot of accessories available should you wish to improve the performance or capabilities of this machine. All in all, I've been massively impressed by the Pergear LaserStorm S10. If you are thinking about getting into laser engraving then this is a great place to start, especially with the big discounts that Pergear have offered us. Don't forget to use the links in the description if you're going to buy one and let me know what you plan to use yours for. I know I plan on spending a lot of time learning more about this great hobby and I may even consider selling some items too as they're so easy to make. If you want to see one of my other review videos then click here or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.